Well, it's time now for Uncancelled, and this man will not be cancelled or silenced. <laughs> Comedian Steve Coogan launched a dramatic defence of the BBC over their new Jimmy Savile drama, The Reckoning, that sees Coogan portray the paedophile children's entertainer. The BBC has come under fire after omitting the scandal following Savile's death, in which executives shelved a Newsnight investigation, revealing him to be a sexual predator, with Dane Pretty Patel accusing the Beeb of trying to rewrite the past. But speaking on Sunday with Laura Koonsberg, the actor defended the drama against accusations it gives the Beeb an easy ride over the scandal. Do you think the BBC has learned lessons from the way he might have been enabled in this organisation and will continue to learn further valuable lessons? It's always difficult when an institution has to be culpable. My initial concern was, are they, are they trying to go easy on themselves? And Jeff, the producer, said, no, uh, quite the reverse. They want to put their feet to the fire. Well, let's get reaction from the wolf of Fleet Street himself, Kelvin McKenzie. Kelvin, listen, let's talk about this. Now, I think this drama is, is a great idea for a TV show, but I don't think the Beeb should have no, made they're, it. No, they're the wrong people to make it. I mean, they, they've, got, they've had their hand in the blood for about 30-odd years with yeah. Jimmy Savile. They, they would have heard all the allegations. In the old days, when a runner or a, even a, a, a sort of mini-producer made a complaint, nobody took any notice. If it happened today, anybody who tried it on, boom, they'd be out the door straight away. In my time, we ran a story saying that Jimmy Savile, who was working at Broadmoor as a kind of freelance, wheeling people about, right, actually, um, the nurses didn't like it. They didn't like the atmosphere. They thought he had too much ability to go anywhere and, quotes, do anything. Anyway, so we run the story. What happened? Jimmy Savile sued us. The nurses were scared to then come forward, yeah. right, because they would lose all their jobs. We ended up having to write him a cheque for 25 grand, as mm -hmm. it was. He was actually abusing yeah. uh, the, 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 uh, these people who were criminally insane. Now, um, th once that had happened, nobody ever went after Jimmy Savile again because they said, well, if the son doesn't stand up for yeah. it, what's yeah. going to happen? So he, he manages to die at 82 or 83. He was never called to justice. Yeah. And the truth about the matter is it would be much better done if Netflix had done it or even if ITV had done it. The idea that BBC, well, I'll keep quiet about that, or uh, that man over there has made an allegation, that woman, oh, forget about that, just forget that, right? Yeah. And so I didn't, didn't agree with uh, Coogan's analysis, but he was being paid by the BBC, he's bound, he's bound to defend them. Go figure. I mean, did you smell a rat with Savile over the years? Did you think something wasn't right about this guy? Yeah, anybody, anybody who had anything to do with him would say, there's something not right. Mm. But to be honest with you, just the way he was a weirdo, um, he, he, he constantly talked about his mum. He had a load of money and yet lived in some council flat in Leeds. Yeah. There was a whole load of things which were madness. But nobody thought that he was abusing people of both sexes at every opportunity for the best part of 40-odd years. Mm. Nobody thought that. And as I say, the time that The Sun did call him out, it cost us 25 grand plus lawyers fees. That, you know, that was enough to see everybody else out. Yeah, well, you did your bit to try to call into account, but he had friends in the police force, didn't he? He had friends in the media. If, had and friends of course at he number had, 10. Number 10, right? And, and also had friends at the palace. And the palace. A yes. close personal friendship with King Charles. Yes, he did. So, uh, listen, let's talk about Labour, who are likely to win the next election, and yep. they will hand more power to the unions. Surely a concern, given the fact that this year the country has been held to ransom by those unions. Yes, I mean, you know, today the deputy leader is announcing, you know, honestly, we're with you and the, uh, we're with you, the unions, and on, on day one we're going to introduce X, Y and Z. The issue about that is what's going to happen now is the, doc the doctors have been told, actually, we're streeting, told the doctors today, mm. don't worry about it, mate, if, you're, if that dispute is still going on when we get in, we're going to give you the money. The RMT, we're going to give you the money. Yeah. There'll be, by the way, the, the, the basic pay of the country is going to take inflation into account for the first time. Everybody, everybody will be on 150 grand a year, right? Asia is already eating our lunch. I guarantee we become uncompetitive. There's bags of bad work coming our way. My bet, Labour, because of social media and various other things, is a five-year term. Once people start sitting in it and they think, oh, my God, mm -hmm. unless I'm... A, I don't know, why are they even appealing to the, the trade unions? They're being paid for them. But the reason they're... There's only five million of them. Our, our workforce is over 30 million. You'd have thought they would try to 
be on side the other 25 million who are funding these ridiculous public sector pay rises? Well, you've got extra costs for business, which is going to be the uh, living wage will go up, uh, plus getting rid of zero hours contracts, which yeah. many people are happy to be on. Yeah, they like zero hours. I think you had me on one of those when I was at Talk Radio. Anyway, but... Well, I, I, I prefer to get you on the no hours contract, but you get turned up. <laughs> you know what? Working for you, that was an argument for a union. But um, the bottom line is that it's extra costs for business, and it sounds to me like inflation and unemployment down the line. Well, don't even worry about that. Uh, inf uh, unemployment is heading our way now. Mm. We are in, we are in, as a country, we are in a lot of trouble, right? We are living beyond our means. Finally, the bills come in, and I'm afraid companies are already starting to lay people off. So expect by the, this is another reason why Labour are probably going to get in. By the time um, uh, the, the general election takes place, we're saying November of next year, yep. I expect our... I, I think we're around about 3.9 or whatever we are, 4%. Yep. 4%. Yeah, we, uh, four, I reckon yeah. it will be nearer 5, five, 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 and, a, five and a quarter. It's going to go up sharply. Uh, people are going to be slung out of their work. Per perhaps, though, uh, Rachel Reeve struck the right tone today where she was quite prudent, wasn't she? The sort of Gordon Brown 2.0. I mean, she didn't really spend any money in her speech today. It was well, going to be businesses would carry the cost. So maybe Labour are getting prudent. Uh, uh...